Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Murray again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you could subscribe to the channel just by clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because that's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm going to continue the videos on augmented reality. We've been using augmented reality and specifically AR Foundation in the last couple of videos and I want to focus on doing a new example. We're going to be using plane detection again but this time we're going to be placing a TV around the room. I think it's a really cool use case that we can do that and I want to provide you with a source code in patreon.com that you can download it and use it for your own prototypes. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, let me show you what we're going to do in this video and walk you through the example that I already created, which is an example that allows you to place a TV anywhere in your area. So the way that this works, this is using the same implementation that I showed you previously where I'm doing plane detection to detect the floors, to detect the walls. So if you haven't watched those videos, make sure that you watch those before you proceed and learn this one, because those, were, those ones are going to be the fundamentals of learning how to do vertical or vertical or horizontal detection in, in augmented reality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the setup that I did and, and what I have right now, which is a very simple welcome screen. I'm showing you what you need to do in order to get this experience going. So I'm telling the user that they can place TVs in AR, following the steps below. So I'm telling them they need to move the device around to map the area, and then they need to touch and release to place the new TV. And then if they touch on existing TVs, they can change the position. Some of the implementation here doesn't work 100%, but this is gonna give you basically a starting point so that you can drop in any type of video and place it in augmented reality with your device. All right, so that's basically the welcome screen and that is right here in the canvas. It's pretty straightforward. I have a panel, which is basically that entire area. So if we go into the scene view and go into 2D, we can I can show you how that is set up. So I have a panel and then a button because I want the user to dismiss that. I'll, I also have a title and then the instructions. So if you wanna change this up a little bit based on you know, you downloading my code and then playing around with it, you're more than welcome to do so because this is open source. The other thing that I have is I have a directional light, I have an AR session, and I also have an AR session origin with an AR camera inside. So most of the work in this video is basically done in the AR session origin, and it's all done by this script that I have right here, which is called placement with many controller. The reason why I call it placement with many controllers is because I want to use this for other things. I may want to use it to place different objects. In this case, I only place, I'm placing two TVs and that's what you're seeing right here. The, the way that it works is this is an array of place prefabs. I have one TV here, I have another TV here. I also have a reference to the welcome panel because I need to dismiss that and I need access to that. And I also have the max number of TVs. This is a property that I use to determine, okay, if I want to allow the user to basically place one TV or multiple TVs. So even though we're placing multiple prefabs, I may want to constrain these and say, okay, you know, I have 10 different TVs, but I only want to allow two. So just a property that I wanted to, I wanted to add for my own testing purposes. Then I have the, I have a reference to the dismiss button. So when they click it, I can close this panel. And then I also have the video clips, which is basically a reference to to the video clips that I have. I was gonna randomize this and basically allow the user to change the channels. So that's what I have these. Right now I'm not using it, but I will use it in a future video. Okay, so how does this work? How do we actually render a TV in Unity? And, and the reason why I wanted to do this is because I wanted to see how a TV will look if I do it in augmented reality. So let me show you the TVs and what the setup is. And all the TV is is basically a cube that I have resized. So if I go ahead and place it here and let's go into 3D, you're going to see that the TV is basically just a cube. And I mean, I scaled the cube to look more like the resolution. It basically has the size of the, the, the video that I have. So if I were to hit play, you're going to see that it's going to, it's actually going to play one of my videos. So I'm just going to hit play. This is a video. And you can see the... And let me go ahead and mute that so you can hear me. But if I go here, you can see that, you know, we can see 
we can see one of my videos playing in Unity, which is actually really cool. And you can, I can actually read the text as well. And this is gonna, this is a script. So there's a lot of use cases that you could use this if you wanted to maybe extend your world and you wanted to have multiple TVs and maybe Apple comes out at some point with you know with AR glasses and you want to have multiple TVs in front of you. I think this is going to be the fundamentals for something like that. And that's the reason why I want to do this because I, I may want to have, you know, one TV where I code, another TV where I'm watching maybe a, a different a different tutorial, and then basically so on. So you kind of get the idea. So this is really cool. I can see how this can, you know, this will look in different rotation. And if I grab the second TV, you can see that that has a different video. Let's go into that one. And yeah, that one has a different video of me and everything. You know, it just looks really cool. So let me go ahead and hit play to stop it. So that's basically what the TV is. If I go in here and look at the AR session, you can see that I have a Place TV 1 and a Place TV 2. And this is the exact same implementation that I did previously. So let me show you how the code works. So again, I, I do this on every one of my videos about AR Foundation where I'm placing things on a plane. You want to make sure that you require this component, which is the AR Raycast Manager. Then I have multiple serialized fields, which are properties that I'm exposing through the inspector. This one is an array of game objects, which I'm using to place the different TVs. I also have the welcome panel, and I have a reference to that because I need to dismiss it. Here's the max number of TVs. Also, the, a reference to the button, the dismiss button, so that I know when the user touches that button, I can dismiss the welcome panel. I also have a, basically an array of added instances, and I'm doing this because at some point I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a toggle. I'm gonna determine okay if the user, you know, selected a different TV. I may want to change that channel, but I want to make sure that I keep track of all the different TVs that are in my scene. Then I also have the touch position because I need to determine where they're touching to find out if I can place one of these TVs. I also have a reference to the video clips and this is an array. I AR Raycast Manager, which is a reference to the component that I show you that I'm requiring. And then on the awake method, it's, it's very straightforward. I get I basically get a reference to the component, to the AR Raycast component. And then I also add a handler. Basically, I pass this dismiss method to this listener so that I know when they click on the dismiss, I'm going to basically disable that panel. And then most of the work is in the update. And at the very bottom, I'm also, I also have a static list of the hits that the user is. Basically, if my raycast is hitting the plane, that's, this is where they're going to be stored. So on the update method, I'm doing a couple of things. Right now, this is not getting used, but what's gonna happen is I'm gonna randomize the video player clip. So if I double click on, if I double, actually double touch on one of the screens, I'm gonna change the channel. And, and this is cool because I think at some point I wanna have multiple videos, and if I double touch on one of the videos, I want to change the video that is playing. So that's what this implementation is gonna be for. I'm not using it, it it's actually working, but I'm only using one video right now. The video clip's length is going to be zero. So this is just going to use the first video clip that it's available in the in the array. And in fact, right now, this is not getting set. So I need to set it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So let me go ahead and go into my video clips. And they are stored in this video folder. Let me just rename these two videos. And then the one that I'm going to use for now is just going to be this first one. There we go. So right now, even though you're touching the touching the video multiple times, it's just going to it's just going to have one video. But at some point, if you want to change that to be multiple, this is going to randomize the selection of the channel, and it's going to give you the next video. Now the next part is where I'm checking to make sure that if the user has at least one touch, I get a reference to the touch. Then on touch begin, I get the location of the touch position, and then I determine if the, the current touch position is ray casting, if I'm basically touching a plane, that's basically what I'm saying right here, then I get the location of the collation of that, of that plane, then I determine if I have added more than, basically more than the limit. And in this case, it's gonna be, I haven't added anything yet, so the count is gonna be zero, 
max number of TV is going to be one. So this is going to be true. And I'm basically going to get one of the prefabs that I have in the scenes, which is going to be either, it could be either this one or this one. Then what I do is I create an instance of the random prefab that I selected. So it could be one of the two TVs. And then I add that TV that I randomly selected to the list of basically the list of game objects. Then the other thing that I do is as, as the user moves the finger around, I'm going to change the location of the TV. The reason why I did this is because I don't want to just place the, the TV at the starting location. I want to be able to move the TV around. And that's what I'm doing he, here on the move. Um, again, I'm determining and making sure that I'm recasting against the plane. If I am, I get the hit pose. Then I determine, okay, if I have added at least one TV to the screen, I get the last added TV, and then I change the position and the rotation based on the hit pose. So I'm basically determining, okay, am I moving my finger and am I placing that in a position where I have already detected a plane? So if I'm detecting a floor, if I'm detecting a wall and I wanna put the TV on the wall, then this is gonna allow me to move the TV around. And that's basically everything in this in this video. What I'm going to show you next is how it actually works and how it runs in my phone. So let's jump into that and, and I can show you how that works. All right, guys, so this is a scene that I created and this is running on my phone right now. You can see how that looks. I put it on the wall and I can see the code on the wall and actually move things around. So that's how that works. And I hope you enjoy this video as much as I did going through it. Right guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. Either you're starting out or you're an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. They also have great forums where you can actually ask questions about anything that is related to game development. There's a lot of people in there that are willing to help you. So make sure that you check them out. And also find me on Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. And I'm also posting early access to source code in patreon.com. Thank you very much, guys.